to Let's Fly VFR. All in next plane 11. Props, jets, and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. And welcome to Bellingham International Airport, everybody, and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today we're having a quick look at one of our subscribers' airports here. He has recreated Bellingham International and uh, done a pretty good job. And just a really good example of what is possible if you're interested in doing it. So we're just taxiing down. Got my wind correction held in. We've got a wind from 274 at about seven knots. So it's, it's not strong, but we're gonna head down to take off on runway 34. So we have a headwind. Now let, we'll just take a stop here in a second. We'll move off to the taxiway a little and I'll give you a quick look at the, the airport. So let's just pull up here a moment quickly before anybody at uh, air traffic or someone yells at us. Let's have a quick look. Let's jump up in the camera and have a look at all the work that John's done here. Lots of aircraft, hangars, redone. This, this whole area here has been redone and all the car park and everything. It's really great work. Done a great job. Now John does like to share his, uh, his airports and he's just done a whole range out at, uh, in the UK as well. Just been doing some airports there, so let's taxi on. Let's... Now remember, if the wind's coming from behind you, you need to be turning away. So we're 27, 27 is behind and to the right, so we need to be diving away, don't we? We need to be turning left and forward. That will keep our wing down. Keep our right wing down, and it'll keep pressure off our nose wheel. So we're coming up to our run-up bay, we'll turn in here. And we'll point our aircraft over to 274. Let's just point ourselves around that way. So 274, 270 being west. Let's point over there and get that fairly close. Let's get our handbrake on. Okay, quick check of everything. Fuel. All the every engine instruments in the green. This is all good if I power up. We can see EGT. The EGT will come up as we go. Let's take ourselves up to 1700 RPM and let's just Turn that off, so that's one magneto off, and we have a small drop, let it recover. Off again to the second magneto that's died off and has recovered. Excellent, so let's put that away. Let's check all our switches are on. We've got our fuel pump and everything is on. Flaps we don't need. Altitude, may I just make sure that it's at 171 feet. So let's just adjust that. It's, it's going to be in the middle of those two. There we go. That's looking fine. Right, let's taxi out and uh, get ourselves underway. Bit of power left on the rudder. Got a bit of cloud. The cloud bases are about 5,000 feet today. Bellingham Airport. Cessna 172 entering and taking off on runway 3. What have we got here? 3 4. We'll check inbound and outbound. And let's get ourselves out here on the runway. Nice big one, isn't it? Okay. All ready to go. Final checks. Wind's coming from the left, so we're going to need a left correction. A neutral correction because it's coming from over here, so it's going to be a bit of a crosswind. 
but seven knots isn't very much, but we'll hold that wind correction in. Okay, ready to go. Powering up. A little bit of right rudder, keep us straight there. The torque's pushing us left. Just balancing the amount of rudder required. Speed's alive, engine's in the green. 40 knots, 50 knots. 55, 60, rotating and up. A little bit touchy. Wouldn't have expected to see here the uh, stall warning come off there, but let's keep climbing out. Now we'll climb up to 500 feet AGL above ground level. Turn left and then we'll continue to climb out and head out on to our destination at Skagit Regional. Here's our 500 feet. Let's turn left. Try not to make the turn too steep. You don't really want to turn too steeply. Still relatively low speeds. And there we go. Coming around onto heading, and we'll continue to climb. I think we'll sit around about 3,500 feet. That'll give us a good safety clearance between us and the hills, and also between us and the clouds. Unless, unless of course, they descend, and we'll account for that. So we just want to set ourselves up for about 76 knots, so nose just down a little. And if you not haven't done any VFR flying, guys, what you want to be looking at when it comes to flying is forgetting all these, forgetting this one particularly. The artificial horizon is not something you use in VFR flying. It's not what it's there for. It's there for instrument flying. What you should be trying to do is, over time, you will work out a particular attitude and how the horizon sits on that on your aircraft. Does it sit just on the nose, on the cowling? So we're just a little bit fast at the moment. We want to come back to that 76 knots. So just attitude controls your speed. Okay, a little bit back more, a little on the, on the trim. Already at 2,000 feet, we need to go a little right to get us on track. That out. Now speed's right, so let's have a look at that side picture. See it's just on the cowling here. appear that we're getting a little bit closer. These, hill, these clouds may have come down a little bit in altitude. Most of the hills out here are around about the 2,000 feet mark as well, so we want to try and have a 1,000 feet clearance between us and the highest point uh, in our area. If you're not sure how to find that and you don't have aviation maps, Sky Vector's a really good place to do that because its maps are pretty much aviation maps. So if you have a look on there, you'll see that there are essentially lots of squares and within those squares you'll see numbers. There'll be a large number and a small number. Sometimes it'll only be small. If you only see a, a small five zero, then it's 500 feet. But if you see a large number, there at one or two or three that's thousands of feet so that shows you the highest point around in that particular square you see lots of numbers all over the chart and that's because they have just a limited range if you like they reference just a small area okay we're coming up to 3,500 feet so we're going to nose down we're going to nose down trim a little We'll let our speed build and check our direction. We're looking reasonably good. You can just move your heading bug here if you like. 
as a reference point. Checking your altitude, just keep nosing down. As you get faster, you generate more lift. And when you get more lift, you want to climb. So let's bring our RPM back to a reasonable level. This cruise level would be about there, I reckon. That cloud's looking a little bit daunting. We may have to go down, I think. Let's balance it out. Yes, yeah, so let's let's descend because it looks like we're going to enter cloud, and we should have a good separation between us and cloud. So we may have to sit at 2,000 feet. Back on the RPM as we're descending fairly steeply down to 2,000 RPM. So we might just maintain that, see how we go. This is what you get when you have real world weather on. You've got to adjust your plans. As it is in the real world, you have to adjust your plans. So let's do that. Let's set our altitude at that point there. And we'll set our heading on the heading bug. So if you hit heading and you're not sure, it will follow wherever this is pointing here. So let's get our RPM up, keep our speed. It'll be my rudders turning off again. Don't worry about that, guys. That's not anything but my dumb rudders. There we go. What we might do is just go a little bit to the right, I think, because it looks like we're going to fly into cloud if we continue this, and I want to try and maintain that altitude. But it may not be possible. Let's descend down. Okay, 500 feet per minute looks good. Just watch your RPM. I just want a little bit of uh, headroom underneath us. That seems that the cloud has descended from where it was previously. And our altimeter is, seems to have adjusted itself as well, as it's now got us up at a lot further than I thought we were doing. So let's adjust our direction again. Let's get us back. And we want to be conscious over here to this air. Uh, there's another major airport that we don't really want to um, inf inflict on the air airspace over there. Now we also need to do a mixture. As you can see here, our engine exhaust gas temperature is very cold. We want it to be up a little so that uh, we're not we're not going to foul our plugs and stuff as well. I think it's possible with that. So we need to go further left. Let's go further left. We went through some cloud banks. It looks like it's got clearer. We're clear of cloud now, which is good. I'm happy with that. And we're at the 2500, our altitude, our heading. We can go onto that nav. Might be the better choice. And we'll click this over. You can see it's on nav at the moment. We'll click that onto GPS. And then it will take us directly to the the airport. It will fly us back onto a heading. Let's have a quick look here. You can click on that and just pop it out. The aircraft will fly back to the line and then it will turn right and take us uh, on our heading. So we're 7, K, uh, 7 nautical miles, so we're a little close. You should make an approach call to your next airport uh, at about the 10 nautical miles. So with all the clouds, we've been distracted a little bit. So let's uh, sort that out. So we want the CTAF is 123.075. So that's 123.075. There we go, we can put that up. And then you make your, your call, let's go to regional Cessna 172, six, uh, seven nautical miles to the north 
inbound Skagit. Gives you a bit of an idea of where you are. Roughly as we're heading in. Let's have a look. At this range we can should certainly be able to see it. It's over here to the right. So we want to start our descent, I think, down. We just want to come down to 1,500. So let's put in a gentle 500 feet per minute. Come back on the RPMs. We'll put our mixture back in now as we're descending. And we'll fly down. We will do a left turn. After we've passed the base of the runway at this end, we'll fly a downwind, turn base, turn final, and then touch down, hopefully, nice and smoothly at Skagit Regional. No ortho here, guys. This is all default. Still looks very nice. speed, don't want it to die off too much. Now we'll get down to 1,500 until we get a little bit closer, although it's going to work out pretty well I think at this point. Let's have a look. So if you can see the runway there, we're going to turn left, up, turn around and come back down. That'll still give us a uh, headwind. And we're going to be landing on 29, 290, so 29, which will mean the wind will be just a little bit to our left, but it'll be a headwind. Okay, let's go back to here and we'll take ourselves right. Using heading. I haven't used the uh, GPS a great deal. I tend to manually fly a lot of the time, so let's get back to there. It's certainly a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? It's always green. You see my uh, videos at my home airport, it's always brown and, and dead. <laughs> Okay, let's turn everything off here. Let's get manual. Let's do our pre-landings. Okay, so I'm going to check our brakes are working, check our fuel quantities. Check our engine instruments are all clear into the white here. And we can make a call. Scheduled regional Cessna 172 entering left down wind for runway 29. Scheduled. checking around the pattern we're above the pattern at the moment still so look 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 all the time and maintain control of your airport aircraft your airport checking left and we will turn left keep our power up first stage of flap Checking a position, aligning us as we want to be around about halfway down the strut, distance wise out. We need to maintain our speed. Okay. Just coming up to the end of the runway, so let's power back a little. We've got our first stage of flap, and we might like just start a descent at this point. Just let the aircraft start to settle into a descent, and we're a little bit high, so power back. Remember, attitude is speed, power is descent rate. Okay, doing good. Okay, Skagit Regional. System 172 turning base 4, runway 29. J 
Gentle turns, always gentle turns guys. When you're in the pattern, when you're flying slow. Otherwise you will hurt yourself. I'm happy at about 70 knots there. I'm going to maintain the 70 knots. Power for 500 feet to set rate. Checking our location. Keep our turn. Descend a little bit faster. Check where we are and getting ready for our turn to final. Schedule regional system 172, turning final for 29. Schedule as we go around. And gentle turns. Make sure it's coordinated. Just need a touch of rudder there as we turn left. Okay. Uh, just overturned it again a little bit, but never mind. We've got plenty of time to recover that and get ourselves lined up. 500 feet approximately is a good place to be as you turn final. Put ourselves there. Okay, powering back, second stage flap. Just trimming out so you don't have to hold the controls. It's a nice long runway, winds just from the left. But it's not even affecting the aircraft at this point, so that's that's pretty good. Maintaining 65 to 70 there on the way in. 70 as we go over the base of the runway there. 29. Now you move your view from where you're looking at the runway to the far end. At about this point, then pull the nose up and just hold the nose. Hold the nose, let the aircraft kill the speed, pull back more. There we go. That's nice. Nice gentle one. Probably the best run landing I've done in a while. And we'll get the brakes on and we'll put everything away. And let's taxi into John's updated version of Skagit Regional. Clear of the runway, so Skagit Regional Cessna 172, clear of all runways. Now this course would be slightly different if you're in a towered airport. Uh, Skagit is a non-towered airport, so that's fine. We're doing the right calls. Um, the procedures, if you are in a, um, a towered airport, are different, guys. And I'm not that familiar because I'm a sports pilot. And sport pilots don't fly into uh, towered airports. It's not really an issue because there's so much space in Australia to fly around without heading into uh, controlled airspace that certainly isn't an issue. So let's taxi in here, we'll shut down, we'll have a quick look at, uh, at John's updated version of Skagit Regional. Okay, let's pull up here. Should be fine, let's check around, all clear. Yep. Okay. Parking brake on. Bop. Okay, parking brakes on. Let's just check everything we needed to do here. We just need to make sure everything is, is still all right. Engines and everything all looking good. Didn't use much fuel. Let's turn our fuel pump off. We don't need that anymore. Let's just check our magnetos. And you do it at idle when you land. We're just checking to make sure they're both still operating. Okay, just recover. You can see, just drop off. One, two, drops off. Okay, good. Back up. Good, let's uh, put our trim wheel back to neutral and let's jump out and have a quick look. But let's turn the engine off first. So let's grab the mixture, turn that off, have a quick scan around the airport. Look at John's work. So this one is a regional airport, so there's not a lot to do, but there's lots of little things done. It's the finer details 
that get done when you're doing these small airports for yourselves. So I hope you've enjoyed that little flight with me and I hope to catch you again on Wednesday when we have our next one in the series of our flight schools. So until we catch you again, if you're a uh, new person here, just found us here at Let's Fly VFR, please feel free to hit that subscribe button, bang that bell button, and tick the likes and all of that stuff. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. So until next time, let's catch you here again on Let's Fly VFR. Catch you soon. Bye-bye. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.